It's my pleasure to welcome you to the Clark Howard Show, where our mission is to serve you and empower you so you make better financial decisions in your life. And I'm really excited about our first topic today. It will address all of those who has the best savings rate questions that I get. Also in this episode, people are back to traveling big time right now, and the scams are coming out of the woodwork, the travel scams. We need to talk about how to avoid them. So people are really confused about something nobody paid attention to the last decade, and that is how to get the best rate on your savings because interest rates on savings actually for almost 15 years were very heavily depressed. The point that, what was the point? You didn't get anything on your money that you had in savings. Today, though, it's so wild because depending on where you go, what you can earn on your savings may be piddly little or may actually be really good. And so it's hard to know where to go and who to trust. So we've gotten so many questions about this that we have a new guide at Clark.com that is designed to help you find the best place to put your savings, and we update it every single day. Now, a lot of these sites that you can shop for rates, they're doing it based on who pays them. That's not our game. We go out there and we try to find the best rates on savings for you around the country. And so we each month will publish a list and then through the month we update as rates move up and down all the time and we give you what the features are of the account or limitations of an account. As an example, what minimum deposit? A lot of the best deals on rates require very large deposits people don't have. So we put a special emphasis on finding places that have a minimum deposit of $0 or $100 so that they're approachable for you. We let you know whether or not you can do mobile deposit with your phone into the accounts. For a lot of people, like for me, being able to do mobile deposit is a big deal. It, is, it makes it so much easier if you're able to just take a picture of the check using the bank's app and send that money right in. Also, the availability of your funds. So you'll be able to see what the best is out there and what the differences are from one account to another. Sometimes even the same bank will be listed twice because they'll have two different types of of savings accounts with different benefits or limitations. And then what I love is we've come up with a calculator that shows you if you're trying to reach a goal based on the money you have, how much you'll end up with after a period of time, whether it's one year, two years, three years, whatever. Remember, my rule, what are savings for? They're for parking spaces for money for emergencies, for specific, more time-limited events. When you look further out, five years or longer, I want you to be an investor. Investing typically means something you can lose money in as well as make. That's when you look at uh, stocks as a big place and great place to build wealth. I love funds rather than owning individual stocks. I love real estate is a place for you to build wealth, potentially long-term. You'll make more money longer-term in stock investments, but a lot of people are made nervous by that, so real estate's a great way to do that as well. Tough time right now, though, in real estate. But for the part of your life that involves savings or building a savings habit or whatever, I want you to get the biggest bang on every buck you're putting in. And that's why we put the effort in to building our new savings site for you and our new savings tool for you to figure out where and how to get the best rate. Do you know, even at this moment, 
You go to one of the giant monster mega banks, you may still only be earning one one hundredth of one percent on savings. And you can earn online very easily with an online bank, typically somewhere in the fours. And that's a big difference, earning four point something percent versus earning one one hundredth of one percent. And remember, it's your money. All right. Well, Katie in North Carolina has a question about saving. My husband is an active duty army approaching year nine of the 20 year full retirement. Thank him for his service. Absolutely. We are serial renters until we are finished with the military. Therefore, we want to buy a house in about 11 to 12 years. We are setting aside ten to $15,000 per year earmarked for purchasing a home. Okay. The two of you are amazing. That is fantastic that you're doing that. What's the best location to save these funds? We're currently putting it into a moderate risk money market account with Vanguard. Would you suggest, suggest a different location given the length of time till the funds are used? Uh, that's actually a decent choice. You're probably in the Vanguard federal money market fund or some equivalent. And that's a really good idea. Uh, one thing you've not said is whether your husband is participating in the TSP. And the thrift savings plan is an important part of your long-term financial security going forward. And I would even be comfortable with you reducing the amount you're putting aside for the purchase of a house in 11 or 12 years so that you're putting money into the Roth version of the thrift savings plan. So you're building up money, even if it means in 11 or 12 years, you, you're trying to save up so you, it looks like you can pay cash for a house. I'd even rather you uh, be able to make a huge down payment, even if you have to take out a mortgage for some amount of it, just so you're putting significant money into the TSP. Um, but having the money for the home in a Vanguard money market fund is absolutely a wonderful choice. If it's a federal obligation, it is equivalent, potentially superior, to FDIC insurance. And Denise in Alabama says, I logged into my old Yahoo email account to look for some old photos and emails I wanted to retrieve. To my disappointment, my account was deactivated and all my information was wiped out. Yahoo didn't send any notification to my phone or backup email I had linked to the account, just wiped it. I got the notification when I logged in that due to a period of inactivity over 12 months, the account was deleted. I just want to warn others to log into old email accounts they may want to keep. I lost some things I will miss. I'm really sorry, Denise. And, you know, uh, the ownership of Yahoo has bounced around and the current owners are trying to reduce expenses. And so they are uh, deleting people's accounts, which without notification to people is not cool at all. And our digital records can vanish. They can be stolen. You know, a criminal can get in there and steal um, an account from us. Uh, this happens with uh, photos or a particular example where people's memories can vanish. And I have something that I want to recommend. I haven't said, I, I may have only done this on TV, that what I recommend there will be certain pictures of milestones, let's say you got kids, of uh, them at different stages of their lives, and you only have those images digitally. I know this is weird. It's like I'm going back to an analog era. Pay to print those out. Do prints of key photos so that you have them actual physical ones so that if the digital records, for whatever reason, at whatever time, disappear you still have them and i don't know if you have do you have any of your kids do you have any actual physical pictures or is I everything do. digitized no i have a lot of physical pictures from when they were younger and now most of it's digitized and we just bought a tiny two terabyte hard drive external hard drive to to back up things because they're backed up on various cloud sites that um, is uh, and i should have mentioned that as well thank you a hard drive is so cheap. Um, these things that hold enormous amounts of digital content, 
And you should have your own backup and not rely just on the cloud. And this is, an, an, uh, when you first do it, if you're not technically adept, it takes a little bit of work. But once you get the hang of it, there's like nothing to it. Having an external hard drive that you plug in and you download these, these pictures and whatever else. So you have one separate from the cloud. Now, I'm really, really sorry, Denise, that this happened to you with Yahoo. John in Colorado says, Clark cracks me up. He's all about security and avoiding risk online, but he regularly promotes Google. Google presents many privacy concerns on so many levels. I avoid it at all costs and have been preaching this to my wife for years. She always dismissed it, and now her employer, one of the biggest banks in the world, has told employees that Google is not safe and no longer allows employees to use anything Google. I sincerely appreciate all of Clark's advice, but what give Clark, gives Clark? So... I know there's the privacy issues with Google, and it's interesting that the bank she works for has said that Google is not a safe environment. If Google loses its cred on protecting your data and being a safe place for your data, man, they're in trouble. And we use Google in so many ways with our company um, we use the Google, is it a productivity workspace. suite or what's it's it called? Works, Google Workspace. Workspace. And we Google found suite. it to be a great product, very functional for us, and very affordable for us. And so uh, saying that Google should be completely out of your life, I'm not sure I can run that direction. But I will say this, if privacy is very important to you and for you, Google's not where it's at. Uh, there are people using a variety of messaging apps that are much more private, that are fully encrypted end to end, that don't have prying eyes to them. There are people using um, mail, email services like Proton, Proton Mail. Yeah. Proton Mail is uh, built from the ground up, all about privacy. For it to truly be private, though, both ends of the conversation need to be using proton mail so there there are people that are very very nervous about google or do not trust google as you yourself do not trust google and the marketplace does offer more and more variety of choices the brave browser uh, that nobody knows about it seems b-r-a-v-e the brave browser is a browser for your computer or your phone that is an ultra private browser that is designed specifically to protect you for searches. I've talked about DuckDuckGo, that DuckDuckGo it was started by a guy who was fed up with what he felt like were the prying eyes of big technology companies. And so DuckDuckGo is designed for you doing searches without somebody looking over your shoulder electronically to see what you're up to and see what you're searching. So uh, n all these things are not that well known, but if this is important to you, there are many ways for you to avoid using not just Google, but Facebook and others like that. You know, uh, there are people who've said to me with WhatsApp that here you got WhatsApp that is protected end to end, but who knows what Facebook's up to, because with their terms of service, they're allowed to be looking at pretty much everything you're doing in your life. So the point is well made, and I appreciate you stating it, and I'm fascinated that your wife's bank said no more Google in her life. Uh, coming up ahead, I want to talk about travel scams, because they are back, they have fully roared back, it's one of the signs that the pandemic is clearly in our rearview mirror. There was a recent report in Forbes magazine that roughly a third of Americans have been victims of travel scams or have a family member or friend who's been a victim of a travel scam. That's a high number. And this is self-reported that people have said in a survey, and the amount of money people are losing is in the hundreds or thousands of dollars. We've had people who've lost much more 
than $1,000 getting taken by travel scams. And they come in all different flavors. Very common are ones that promise you some amount of travel in return for you paying service fees up front, or saying you've won travel, but you have to pay taxes and um, uh, promotional fees or whatever. And these are old, oldie but baddie scams that go all the way back to the 1980s. But because of electronic communication, have become much more common. And with social media, people end up being taken. Sometimes influencers that take advantage of you, they don't even know that whoever is paying them is a con artist, and they're helping a con artist rip you off. Now, I've talked about the influencer problem before, that just because you love somebody's fashion sense or humor or whatever it is that makes you a follower of that influencer, remember, just because you enjoy their content doesn't mean you need to buy things that they're pitching. And they're so subtle. They'll say, uh, you know, an influencer will be wearing something and saying, oh, I just love this outfit. I, you know, I, I got this, blah, blah, blah. And they're not disclosing that they're being paid to wear that outfit and say it. When travel, somebody will say something who you really trust, and you think, wow, what a deal. They're doing this, that, or the other. And know that, that this is an area where we want to get away, we want the travel fantasy, we want all that, and we're vulnerable. <laughs> we get taken advantage of. Timeshares all through the years. There are so many ways you can get taken. What am I hearing now? I'm hearing people getting ripped off on travel booking sites that turn out to be either just sleazy, crooked, or flat-out scams where you book an air flight and you get to the airport and they've never heard of you. Or you book a hotel and you've traveled all day to get there and you get to the hotel and they're like, who are you? And I notice when I use search sites looking for deals, I'll see all these hotel booking sites that no one's ever heard of. And then you go review that site. You go check out what people are posting and they're telling you they're just straight out scams and they live just to rip people off. And you need to be so aware, if, particularly if you don't travel all the time and you don't really know how the game works. It's really easy to be vulnerable and being taken advantage of. So when I book, I am very, very, very cautious with who I book with. Um, there's also a thing going on where if you check who owns a site, it may be owned by a well-known and recognized travel supplier. And even though it is an obscure name, it may be just fine to book with. And then there'll be another one that is a name you don't know. And there's a good reason you don't want to know that name because they're just there to take advantage. I was on TripAdvisor the other day looking at hotel reviews before I booked a hotel. And I was looking at all the prices they gave from different websites. And there was one hotel booking website after another that was a UFO to me. And I went and looked and every one of the UFO sites, they may not have all been scams, but every one of them that just was not recognizable to me, because I travel all the time, so I should know these organizations. Every one of them was one that people were complaining about fiercely with terrible, terrible ratings and reviews. So in the travel area, who you book with is going to be a key thing to protect your wallet and protect your vacation. And just because they post 
a really great price and you feel like, oh, I got to book my air flight with them or I got to book my hotel with them, it could lead to all kinds of heartache and potentially no vacation at all. Your money takes a one-way trip. You don't get to take the trip at all. Krista? Okay, speaking of that, Leona in Ohio wrote to you and she said, I have saw a trip with Road Scholar that I that looked interesting. Some of the reviews were not very good. I'm 80 years old. Should I take a chance on Road Scholar or look elsewhere? So that's not an organization I'm familiar with. Oh, really? It's a nonprofit. My parents have taken trips with them. It's, it used to be called Elder Hostel. Oh, I remember yeah. Elder Hostel. Yeah, so they do trips, and it's like educational trips, usually for people who are older, um, and it's a pretty re reputable organization. So uh, I don't know the nature of the negative reviews that you're referring to, Leona, with, um, I always knew it as Elder Hostel, called Road Scholar. Road Scholar, R-O-A-D scholar.org. So uh, what I think with reviews is as you read them, read what people are unhappy about. And if they're the kind of things that would make it a miserable experience for you, then it's not who you should be booking with. So sometimes it will be that something's just a terrible buy, a terrible experience, or it could be the different attitudes different people have about it. An example of that for older travelers is river cruises. If you read reviews of various river cruise operators, it's amazing because there are people who will be on the same ship for a river cruise, and one traveler will think it's the greatest experience of their lives, while another may say it was the worst waste of their money ever, and they couldn't wait to get off the river cruise. And so that that is an issue in travel that what one person enjoys, another doesn't. But in terms of, um, I, I started to say elder hostel again, because that's how I know them. They have been, over the years, a respected source of travel. Yeah, so they there are some bad reviews I was just looking. So, yeah, I would definitely read through all the reviews I could just because maybe things have changed. I don't know. That is possible, too, that things have changed. But also the things that people dislike about it may be the kind of things that you'd hate, too. Richard in Michigan says, T-Mobile recently changed its billing discount, adding $15 to my bill to use a credit card with auto pay. They want a debit card or bank account. Not happening. We are currently paying $60 grandfathered in our plan per month for two lines unlimited and $50 per month for the home internet. Are there any other plans or carriers worth considering or should we suck it up and pay the additional $15 per month? So, um, Richard, you know how... I don't like for you to use a debit card or allow access to a checking account to pay a bill. And I'll answer your, your question that you actually asked in a second. I think it's worth it to get the discount in this case because you know what your plan costs. There's no additional junk fees you pay with your plan with T-Mobile. And I think it would be worth you picking up the $15 a month, the $180 a year you'd save by linking the account. Now, the question you asked, for internet service, you may not do better than the T-Mobile home internet. It's a very well-priced product. But for your cell phone service, you can do substantially better now than the 60 a month you're paying. And we have... Uh, cell phone services on Clark.com that are a lot, uh, well, a lot cheaper. Depending on how much data you need, there are many that will be cheaper and will permit you to pay by credit card. So you could look at that guide. But if you've been really happy with T-Mobile and you're just annoyed at the $180 extra cost per year, I would feel comfortable linking it to your checking account or to your debit card in this situation because it's a fixed price. There's nothing they could come back later and play dirty pool with you on your monthly price. Or maybe open up a free checking account online and just put enough in there per month to pay the bill or something. You could certainly do that as well. And then your regular money isn't at risk in any way. 
Mike in Ohio says, Clark, more and more businesses are now passing along to the customer the 3% or greater Same issue. Yep, fee that the credit card companies are charging to the businesses. I've run into this recently when going to the dentist, paying for a car repair, and again when buying tires. I know you discourage the use of, che use of checks, but short of carrying a large amount of cash, what are a consumer's options? Yeah, this is, this is about the ongoing war that is as best I can tell, only in the United States, that in the United States, the Visa MasterCard cartel has been able to price fix on fees for taking credit cards. So our merchant fees are way higher than they are anywhere else that I know of in the world. And Visa and MasterCard have, this is one of the problems with modern capitalism in the United States and why people sometimes refer to it as crony capitalism, is that lobbyists are able to spread money around Capitol Hill and have laws that are to their liking, to the harm of the free market and to the harm of the American people. And so the Visa MasterCard cartel are an enormous problem. You know, I use reward cards and I got all this money back using reward cards. And it seems like such a great deal. But the reality is nobody else in the world has these reward cards because nowhere else in the world that I'm aware of are people paying these massive fees as restaurants and business owners of various types to accept credit cards. So I support fully uh, the dentist, the car repair place, the tire store, uh, wherever, or restaurants, wherever they charge a stated fee for using credit cards because it is a huge expense for a business and erodes their profits so much. You know, the actual cost of processing that credit card is virtually nothing. It is a tiny, tiny charge, a cost to the credit card companies and only because of the cartel that exists in the United States with the price fixing on fees, has it been possible for the banks to commit what I call reverse bank robbery and charge these massive expenses on the backs of retailers and restaurants, and in your case, the dentist. So then you and I have a choice to make. Do we want to use the plastic or do we want to pay some other way? Now, you brought up a very interesting point. You don't want to carry a large amount of cash. And that brings up, what do you do in that case? And we're back to having to potentially use the piece of trash, fake Visa or MasterCard, a debit card. And the fee structure on debit cards is different. And that's why that is something that is a, a different issue, a different thing, is that in this case, you're choosing to save 3% for the possibility that something will go wrong using that debit card. And I'm going to leave that to you to make that decision because carrying a big wad of cash is not the safest thing in the world. I just wanted to say I looked up Road Scholar on uh, Give.org, which is a great place to check out charities, and they are an accredited charity. Um, and they, it says that in the last uh, 36 months, they've had two BBB complaints. So just FYI, one more piece of the puzzle when you're researching that. So that's, uh, that's for Leona. Leona, who was asking earlier about Road, Road Scholar. Scholar. And uh, I... I think that you need to to decide if you, it's a lot, you know, you're laying out a lot of your hard-earned money. And if you feel like that, uh, that the reviews you've read make you uncomfortable spending the money and using them, then don't use them. Because that is why you look at reviews in the first place. And if it's created enough doubt in you that this doesn't feel like a good decision, Follow your gut, follow your heart on this, and look somewhere else for a travel adventure, potentially. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and remember what we're about. 
giving you ways to save more, more spend less, less, and avoid rip getting off. ripped off. And have a great day. Did you mess that up?